Hello and welcome back to another art review. Um, today we're going to look at a painting called uh, Dnieper. The Dnieper. The the Dnieper. The the Dnieper in the morning. I'm I'm sorry. Um, I don't know what that is. That river is called. Uh, the Dnieper is a river I think located in Siberia in Russia and this painting is by uh, Quinji um, Arhip Ivanovich and I'm not sure if he is Russian or let's uh, let's have a look okay cool so Quinji uh, Ivanovich uh, born in 1842 in Mariupolsky Uyezd Mariupolsky Uyezd I'm sorry, I have no idea uh, about pronunciations or the the language of Russian. Um, so apologies for that. He is on view in the in the Tretyakov Gallery for sure, and the Metropolitan Museum of Art as well. Um, considered to be an impressionist versus or r realism, uh, because of him being quite early in the 18th century. Is it 19th century? I don't know. 1800s. His method or his methodics or approach to landscape painting is uh, somewhat uh, national romantic rather than than realistic. I I would say, um, but who am I to judge? So something uh, here is the painting, the Dnieper in the morning. Um. I love this painting. It's so simple. It's so calm. Um, I'm wondering if he was considered to be one of the like uh, mood painters or, or moody landscape painters or something like this because this is to me clearly a, uh, a sense of calm and uh, just the idea that you get to rest your eyes on these little flowers right there um, really really introduces that to me. You have this flat, incredible landscape that you're looking over, but if you don't want to go far into the unknown, you can still come back and sort of rest your eyes upon this. I'm, I'm assuming there's symbolism in there as well, but I'm not sure. But why I say that he is painting more of a national um, romantic painter is because this painting to me doesn't look like it's painted outside. Um, so probably before uh, an explosion of industrialism presenting portable painting to the the landscape lovers out there. Um, but again, I'm not a historian. Uh, I'm just guessing here. I could be completely wrong. Uh, please correct me if I am. And if you know anything about this painter more than more than <laughs> birth date and birth location. Um, let me know. But yeah, it's nice. Something I really, uh, really get absorbed in, in in this painting is is the sky. I mean, the sky is it's so subtle. Uh, the changes in there aren't too big, but you still get the idea of it being darker up there and going to brighter and really glowing. You know, and that is something absolutely worth talking about especially for you guys who are, are uh, painting landscapes and haven't done it for a long time but so if you look at the range of values in this sky maybe there's two values in here if you look apart from that so maybe you could consider yeah probably three but they're very subtle and normally when we look at a sky we see the sky dark at the top and then closer to the horizon it will be really really bright so we start putting three or four values in there but this is a really good example of sort of limiting your value range and especially close to the horizon where people tend to go into a value change if we look at this closer here well I mean there's some changes in here that's for sure but I mean yeah I don't know it feels more of a vibration kind of change so going from yellow to blue purple and back to more neutral grayish white I guess um, 
maybe not even the brightest white here that he has. It should be. Yeah, probably it is. But there isn't a value change. From here to here, this is more or less the same value. So you can con con convey that change in the sky without changing the values. So you remain within a very limited um, or restrained value shape in the sky, giving you a lot of more options in, in your value range and the way you're compressing it. Um, something I just see people um, not doing and to it would be beneficial for them to to sort of restrain their values in, in the sky and not use up that entire range because if you if you do look if you squint even a little bit of the sky it blends into one one value for sure but and, and you can you can actually yeah if you cover your hand if you cover this piece down here together with me um, it's clear that the values up here aren't they're not really they're not really changing it's the same value but as soon as you int introduce that that dark value shape the the edge closer to it appears to be brighter which is also a great example of how like everything is relative in painting both colors and values but I love it. It's really, really nice. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, here, yeah, also closer to the horizon. Something that that really happens in the morning is that you get this, if you're out painting in the morning in a backlit scene, open fields and stuff like that, you have like a lot of, of, uh, uh, unjeopardized, say, climate or, or, or weather in, in the atmosphere. If you're on the countryside, this is clear. If you're in the city, not so much. But if this is in Siberia as well, at, at 1840, um, I'm sure that this was quite barren land. So this change would be probably incredible or, or the, the phenomena would be incredible because the backlit sky with a lot of mist in the air in the morning, it really, really glows. It really you won't see you won't see anything much brighter than that which is fantastic it's absolutely gorgeous and you can see that glow in this painting also because he decided to exaggerate the value change a little bit probably in in the big flat like in the in the open field or whatever it is Yeah, there's a slight value change here. It's quite exaggerated. It's turning a little bit more purple as well. He's doing something with the color here. Maybe that helps. But it really gives you the impression of that the sky is actually glowing when that is so close to the sky as well. You can almost not see the horizon lines in some areas. Oh, look at that. <laughs> the tiny little boat there as well. So maybe not so barren after all. I mean... Oh, this is nice too. Look at all these all these small dots that's great here as well he puts a lot of information in there without being too noisy without being too distracting and and feeling i mean it feels quite repetitive in, in many ways but it is with such little focus that is repetitive that it works the color and value changes are so minimal that that it doesn't really matter the, where you're focusing your eyes in the foreground on these flowers here and following the river you don't see that type of repetition at all really uh, some no I wouldn't say spaces between and, and stuff like that it doesn't feel repetitive whatsoever so yeah I wonder how big this is definitely paint on canvas see the texture here and how how soft and loose it is. It's also an indication of how unimportant the foreground is. Even though it is a lot of of information, he spent very l at least less time here than on the sky or on the river and the flowers. This foreground, even with the flowers, aren't as important as, as the rest of the painting because it's close to the edge. 
so you don't want anything stealing too much attention uh, close to the edge. That's nice. It's beautiful. Look at those clouds. Look at the oranges and reds in there and the yellows. And how subtle, how subtle those changes are in the values in the clouds. Like the dark of the cloud is, I mean, it's, a, it's barely a change in value between the dark and the light in the clouds. That's cool. Oh, and there's a bird. I can't believe I didn't see that. A very nice, delicate little bird. So this is probably quite big, this this painting, now that I'm seeing the bird and the texture of the canvas. I'm assuming it's it's quite big. Um, so this would probably be in the Tretekov gallery. Would be cool to go and see it. Oh no, is that a butterfly too? Yeah. <laughs> what a guy. Oh, several butterflies. There's one here. There's one here. That's so playful, that's really nice to sort of present that to the audience. Like, here you go, we can, we can look at that. And there's some things happening down here as well. What is that? Is that water being back lit, back lit and, and reflecting something? Maybe. Look at that, even like the flowers closer to, to the edge of that hill, which is also really nice. Like how how well that is portrayed the turn of the hill here that these things objects you see down between the grass there's there's larger darker areas the flowers are bigger here's another butterfly that's white um they become smaller and smaller and more and more blended with the the next layer of, of say space and they almost disappear Great, loving this painting. Quinji Arhip Ivanovic. Ivanovic is the easiest to remember, I assume, if you're, at least if you're Scandinavian. Yeah, very nice. Loving it. Cool. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.